recording. All right. We're recording. All right. Yeah, Mark, thanks for coming today. Uh, thanks for anybody who's watching this afterwards. Um, we're going to be talking uh, a bit about uh, Git. So as part of the IGDA, we're starting to move in the direction of a session called Make a Game. And we've already had multiple sessions on this. And the idea behind the Make a Game is we're trying to actually get a game made locally by our developers, by our uh, anybody who's interested in the music and the art and everything about gaming and just kind of walk step by step. So it really is an interesting challenge for us to be able to put these pieces together. Uh, but now that we're you know working our way to get the pieces together, how can we actually collaborate on a product? How can we collaborate on a project? So collaboration is hard. It is super hard. So what we're going to do today is we're going to have a conversation uh, about one of the products that uh, is available called Git, G-I-T. Um, and uh, it is what we're going to be using alongside uh, within GitHub. And so that's where the repository is. All the details about the Make a Game stuff are actually going to be posted within the channels on Slack and within Discord. Um, but just to give you a little, uh, let me go ahead and share my screen and then there we go. Cool. I hope you can see my screen. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and talk a, a bit about Git. Go ahead and get us set up uh, ready um, for uh, it, just getting a better understanding of what Git is, why we have Git, and just kind of walk a bit of a through a bit of a demo around how do you use Git through the command line? What are some of the tools to make it easier? And what are those uh, version control systems out there that we could use such as GitHub or GitLab or Azure DevOps or uh, Bitbucket or any of those other cool ones out there, right? So uh, let's start. So uh, this is a presentation within the uh, IGA, IGDA Des Moines. So that's the International Game Developers Association. So our goal is to connect and support local game developers, uh, artists, or anybody who's actually within the, uh, the game industry. Uh, if you're a manager within a game, we'd like to see you as well. Uh, we not only uh, have individuals uh, with, within any parts of the game development process that we can help connect with you with if you're newer, uh, but we have a lot of people that are also looking to learn. So if you have a lot of knowledge and you're looking to mentor somebody or you'd like to be mentored by somebody, come approach us. We'd love to help. Our goal is to help you uh, get into the industry and to become more knowledgeable in what you have. So we have presentations like this just to take you through some of the, some of the fun things. And while this presentation today is not specifically geared towards gaming, what it is geared towards is uh, software development collaboration. So especially with the pandemic that we've all been through in this last year, one of the biggest things is how do we, uh, how do we continue developing with people uh, states away? And we've been able to do it super successfully in all the projects that I've been on using Git, using tools like GitHub, Azure DevOps, Bitbucket, any of those. So let's go ahead and move forward. So who am I? I'm Brian Gerhards. Nice to meet you. I'd shake your hand, but we're in COVID, so bump elbows. Uh, I'm the co-chair of the IGDA alongside with EB Uptograph. Uh, I apologize, I probably just uh, messed up her name. I'm also a software consultant with Lean Techniques uh, out of Johnston, Iowa. Father of three and a barbecue enthusiast. If I can uh, smoke it, I will. Uh, there's my uh, Twitter, which I do not post on Twitter, nor do I share. That's a fun place, right? Uh, there's my LinkedIn, and that's how you can find me up on GitHub. So. Uh, also, one last thing is on the top of all these slides, if you'd like to get a hold of uh, IGDA, uh, please hop on our Slack, go and join the community, hop on our Discord. We do have people there that are always available in case you have any questions. Also, take a look at our Facebook uh, for any of the upcoming events. Cool. Now let's get on. So as we're talking about Git, what we're really talking about is version control. So what is version control? So uh, it's a practice of tracking and managing changes to software code. Uh, systems that allow teams to manage versions of repository over time. And uh, as I noted on here, version control is not only for software. While we talk a lot about software, it makes software easy. It makes software merging and collaboration easier. I should never say easy, right? It, it's, al it's always up here that makes it easy. But 
there really is a uh, version control can help manage files. Uh, so as a file changes over time, you get different versions of it and you could bring those old versions back. So it's the idea of being able to, uh, again, just bring versions back. That's the best way to say it, I guess. Uh, uh, on the right are different examples of uh, version control software out there. Uh, there's Big Bucket, there's Monotone, Azure DevOps, Micro. there's a Micro Focus. Uh, I apologize, I don't remember what the specific product is from them. Uh, Perforce, which if anybody's using the um, uh, Epic uh, Unreal, if anyone's using Unreal, I believe that right there is what you're using behind the scenes if you're using any sort of collaboration. Uh, as well as I threw Unity Collaborate on here. They do have Unity Collaborate, which is pretty cool. And I believe over the years, it's actually even gotten better. It's gotten closer to uh, a closer to get than it was before. So before it was essentially like throwing into a folder and bringing those changes into your stuff. Uh, Mercurial, I believe that's how you pronounce it. AWS Code Commit and uh, also GitLab and GitHub. GitHub uh, being the most popular at this time, I believe. Uh, Subversion is one that I've used uh, in big enterprises. So all of these are being used somewhere of some capacity, and they're not all Git based either. So Subversion uh, is not Git. It's a it's a completely different thing. Unless that's changed, please correct me. So uh, let's move on. So what is Git? Git is the most widely common used is the most widely used modern version control system in the world. Uh, it it was an open source project that was created by 2005 by Linus uh, Torvald to help aid in the Linux kernel development, uh, as well as Git is the project behind many of our popular version control systems. So behind GitHub, behind GitLab, uh, those are those are just repositories that are holding on to your code, uh, and uh, behind the scenes is Git. Uh, so you you have the layer of Git, then uh, all of your code is actually being stored on their servers. So all the Git commands that you're running in your local repositories are essentially the stuff that's being cloned and being run on their side. So uh, they might be using a different flavor of it because it is open source. So they could do whatever they want to Git at this point. Um, but Git is Git's what you're using to push and pull the code from their repository. So it's, it's, uh, it's pretty nice. I'll just say that. What are the benefits of Git? So uh, Git provides the entire history of a repository. So as you start making changes to files, as you start making changes everywhere uh, uh, in different branches, and we'll start getting into that. So your repository contains branches, which contains commits. Uh, as you start making changes across the world and you start bringing things back together, you start creating that history of changes. All that history exists. That branch will never truly disappear. Uh, it will always be there somewhere in history. As you see on the right-hand side, for anybody who has actually used Git, um, I only put this in here because this is a, an absolute mess of a Git history, and I would hope that you wouldn't have to live through this. But it's just a fun representation of, uh, I guess, lots of colors at this point, since we're still learning about Git, right? Uh, Git is also distributed version control. Uh, so as I put on here, every instance of the repository also contains the entire history. This makes it easy to work with the repository uh, in case you get uh, left on a desert island. So whenever you pull code down, you get the latest code. What you're working on is on your local machine. You're no longer connected to the remote. So you can disconnect your internet. You can, again, go on a stranded island. You can hop in airplane mode on an airplane or in a fighter jet, whatever, floats your boat. Uh, and you can still continue working on your code. Now, where you do have to have internet is to connect to that remote repository. You do have to be able to make those calls, make those uh, calls to push and pull and do all your merges and everything that you need to do to update your commit history. So uh, while, it, while you can be working remote and alone, you still need the internet for some collaboration. But distributed version control makes sure that if that you and someone sitting next to you, if you're working on the same branch and you pulled at the same time, you all have that entirely exact same history. And as you start making changes and pushing changes forward, uh, there are ways to change history in a bit. We're not going to get into that today. But what you can do is you can you can push your stuff up uh, with, uh, with a, a pretty good guarantee that as they start pushing their stuff up, you both will be at the same baseline, just with the different commits going forward, with the different file changes. We'll get into that a little bit later, too. 
Uh, easy to use with many online resources in case you need help. Uh, it's one of my arguments for why I like Azure DevOps over Google Cloud, because Azure DevOps has a ton of online resources where Google Cloud does not, and that, that's opinion. And that's just from a little bit of uh, history with Google Cloud. But working, uh, if you have any questions about Git, uh, it, it's super easy to find answers on the internet and the Git documentation is, is very well done as well. Uh, and I put fast on here. So as you start pulling files down, the, the limits that you have really are just the internet connection. Uh, there is some file compression that happens going back and forth. Truly, I don't know what type of compression, but it is really fast to get stuff updated and to be able to get something to the person next to you. So back in the days of using something like uh, Dropbox, where you have to drop the file, you have to do the update, they have to do the manual merge, do all that fun stuff. Git actually has a lot of that stuff built in for you. And you're going to be able to experience some of that watching the demo here in just a little bit. Cool. How am I on time? All right. Land, let's move on to the next. Um, excuse me. If you have any questions about distributed version control, I do have a link at the bottom here as well. Uh, I do plan on putting this presentation up somewhere for people to get, maybe just in a PDF document. So in case you want to take a look at that, it's it's pretty fun. So how does Git work? So there are a number of key concepts that we need to look at, uh, and really that defines how Git works. So Git contains a repository or a repo, it's just a shorthand uh, that you'll hear a lot of people use, uh, it's just a collection of files. So a repository is a collection of files um, a split between multiple branches. Now, a branch is a collection of commits with a history typically used on a primary branch. So if you can imagine like a tree, so you have your main trunk, we'll just call it that, we'll call that your, uh, your master or main. Those are the primary uh, names used for the, uh, for the trunk. And in subversion, you truly do have the trunk. Uh, off of that, you're gonna create branches, which is just going to be taking the, the code as it is uh, at that certain commit and you're going to be branching off and eventually you're going to be putting it back in there into that main uh, trunk uh, and that's going to be your code merge. A snapshot is going to be a commit. So whenever you take a commit, you take what a file looks like at a very specific time. So a revision. Uh, uh, let's see, what else do we have? Uh, a commit is a point in time when a snapshot is taken. So if you go to, we're going to look through a log later and you're going to see a number of commits and it's going to show a snapshot. We're going to go on GitHub, and we're going to actually dive into those uh, one of those commits a little bit. You can see it shows a snapshot of all the files, uh, the additions, changes, and updates. Sorry, the additions and updates that were added to each of those files, uh, and deletions, as well as uh, it, we'll be able to take a look at that a bit. But it just shows all the all the changes that were made at that time and exactly uh, where that file stands at that very moment. Uh, next thing is we have the head, and this is the uh, reference to the most recent commit. So when you pull down a branch, when you create a branch, when you pull down master, the head is going to be where you are at that time. Uh, there is the idea of having a uh, detached head, which it sounds great. Um, we're not going to get into that today, but just imagine the head is where you are at, and we will we'll also look at the log and, and take a look at that. Now, what is main or master? So the new term, it, it used to be called master. I, I know the, the society has changed it to move over to main. So main is the primary or source branch in a repository. You're still gonna see master a lot. So I wanna, you're gonna hear me refer to that a lot. So master is essentially that baseline. It's gonna be that trunk. It's going to be where the, the source of truth is. So off of that, you have your branches. Uh, Next is merging. So it's the act of combining snapshots into a single branch. So as you take all your commits, you're going to have uh, a commit from one from uh, excuse me from a branch, and you want to merge it back into the trunk. Well, you need to merge it in. So that merging creates a new commit, which shows the the uh, additions from that new branch or from that branch. Excuse me. Uh, polling is downloading content and commits from a remote repository to up, update the uh, content locally. And we'll take a look at that. It's just, again, the idea of being able to pull stuff from GitHub and then the opposite of being able to push stuff out to GitHub. And I keep saying push it out to GitHub. GitHub is what we're going to be showing the examples on. I'm also going to be showing all the examples in command line so you'll be able to see everything that happens uh, that we're doing. 
I believe there's a rebose uh, command that we can do on everything. We're not going to do that. We're just going to do get push, get pull, get commit, get checkout. We're going to be using some pretty basic stuff today, but you'll be able to see exactly what it's uh, what it's doing. We'll, we'll kind of look through those different lines and just have a quick conversation. Why not? Cool. If you have any questions along the way, just feel free and uh, poke your nose in. Uh, just if you want to just raise your hand, that'd probably be the easiest. I, I do have everybody up over here. Cool. So we're going to talk about some of these concepts now. And the big one we're going to talk about first is a repository. So if we hop over to GitHub real quick, and let me see if I have GitHub open. If not, I will get it open. All right, I do. So repositories are just a list of the repositories that you have available to you. You can create repositories. You can uh, delete repositories. But essentially, as I said, the repository is a collection of files. So it has a directory. The directory has files inside of it. Uh, and then let's, that's, that's what a repository is. Repository is your collection of files. Let's go over here. Uh, all of your commits are stored here, as well as all your hard work. So everything that you have done is inside of this repository. <clears throat> Your repository can also live on your local machine or uh, a version control system such as GitHub or GitLab or Azure DevOps or, uh, wow, drawing a blank, uh, Bitbucket. Haven't used Bitbucket as much as I have the others. So uh, cloning. So it's the idea of copying a repository to your local. So you do have to put, you do have to initialize GitHub or Git on your machine and point out to a remote. And I'll show you that in just a, just a few moments. Uh, and so that's gonna be copying all those files down to your machine, all of the history, all of everything that has happened. Uh, the other two things with repositories is we can push and pull. So pulling, as we said before, is downloading the, co the content and commits from the re remote repository to update the content locally. And pushing is uploading in the opposite direction from local to the remote. <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about branches. So all commits live on a branch. Uh, master and main, their branches, and anything else that you want to do. If you want to update a title, so let's we'll create a branch later that's called update title. Uh, that title is going to have commits because, or that update title branch is going to have commits because everything that you want to do, you're going to you're going to make the changes, you're going to stage the changes, and you're going to commit the changes and create those commits. That's that snapshot that we were talking about just a little bit ago. Uh, as of right now, I read that there are no limits to the number of branches that you can have. Um, this, is a, this is an opinion right now. I would not create too many branches because it creates a bit of confusion. And because when you start pulling stuff down, uh, and I would just recommend limiting the number of branches that you actually create to what you need. Uh, if you have something that's sitting around for a while, it goes stale. If you want to start merging it into master, say after a year, I mean, why keep a branch around for a year? But opinion, uh, you're going to have to catch it up with master. So you have to merge everything from master into it. And that can become a pain because a lot happens in a year. So I would either keep the number small or keep everything up to date. Just make sure that your branches are not, do not become stale. Uh, also on here, I put the primary branch and the main branch is called either master or main. Again, main is becoming more common. So let me see, uh, let's break down this image just a little bit. <clears throat> so at the bottom, uh, all of the green, uh, those are your commits. So this is representing your commits. Now arrows point left. I don't understand why they commit, why they point left, but uh, your timeline goes from left to right. So the timeline goes from left to right. A47C3 is the earliest one that we can see on here. The latest commit, the latest, the newest code uh, push is ED489. So there are a couple of things to point out on here also. So head, remember we said that this is the most recent commit to the current branch. So head is, we're right now in main. So if we were to go ahead and check out stable, so we want to start working in this branch, this would become our head. This is what the local environment actually uses. Uh, right now on this one, you can see the current branch is main, reference to the current branch is head. 
Uh, this also points out to something else. Uh, let me see if it talks about it here. So when we talk about different branches and I talk about them going stale. So the idea is as you start committing and pushing your code into one branch, it's, it's almost like when you, create a when you create a branch, you're copying a folder. So you're gonna copy a folder called master, which has all this code in it. And you're gonna copy it and you're going to create a new folder called add title, right? So if I go in and I start making changes inside of add title and I say, cool, this is where I wanna be. This is, this is something that I wanna put back. And this is what I actually wanna use in production. I can now copy all the files that were in add title. Now this isn't exactly how Git works, but I can now go overwrite them in that master folder. Uh, and that's up to date. Now, master is up to date with what's in the other branch. And the other branch hasn't diverged much uh, because it's, they're the only two that we have. Where we start getting into complexity is when we start making changes into add title and we make changes into master. So now master has changes that the add title branch does not have. And let's just say we never touch that add title branch. So that's our example right here. So stable was copied and master has continued moving forward. In fact, it's four commits ahead. So there are four commits on master that are not inside the stable branch. So what has to happen? Uh, we need to catch stable up. So instead of copying stable, or let's just say add title, we'll go back to that example. Instead of copying add title into master, it's gonna be the other way around. And so then at that point, we need to, that's where get makes another commit to say, all right, stable has been caught up. And so stable will be up here, plus it'll have one additional commit saying, I have everything master has. And that's just, a, that's a git thing. So let's go ahead and move forward. And that'll make more sense again, when we start playing around with stuff. I say things make, will make more sense later. I definitely, when you start playing around with demo and doing it yourself, I promise this stuff makes so much sense. Always, cool. So branching off the primary branch. So you start with, uh, so starting with the branch, start of a branch points to a specific commit. So if we're looking at this example right here, when they branched off stable, uh, they branched off right here. So B325C is where new actually was branched off. Now, what happens is when there's a new commit that actually happens, that's where you start seeing the diversion from master. So 2EECB now has code or now has a file of some sort that is not in master or excuse me, in main. So 2EECB may have a title that says uh, hello world while main has a new title that says uh, we got this, we got this. So that's where we start seeing some of these diversions and actually the, the branch is kind of starting to veer off. Now, at this point, you can see we actually do have this new branch and this is our current head. This is where we're at. Main is going a little forward. So we're gonna talk about merging in just a moment. So when you wanna make any changes to your project, you make a new branch based off a of commit. So that right there also is a little bit of opinion. Uh, there is, uh, I highly recommend using branching to pull code off uh, into, to be able to work on code, uh, unless you're making really small changes. And then there is the idea of a Git strategy where people just work out of master. So they don't really use branching unless they're testing stuff out. Uh, so the, the one, the one pattern that I have seen most in clients is a branching strategy of you're working on something, move it out. So then you have the, the ability to do, excuse me, to create pull requests, we'll get into pull requests, to create pull requests to merge the code back into main. So it gives someone the opportunity to actually look at the code before it goes into a live environment. Now that gets into CI CD also, we could do another session on that just to have that conversation. But now at this point, what we've seen is we have stable still hanging out back here. At B325C, we went ahead and created a new branch called new. And we have a new commit to EECB. So we're, we're moving right along. All right, next is merging. This is where we get to have a little fun, right? 
So as part of merging, as it shows, merging creates a new commit that incorporates changes from other commits. Uh, below is a simple merge, uh, bringing all commits from the main into the stable uh, branch. This is because stable has zero commits that are different from main source that the branch has created. So in this example, we need to, we need to catch up stable. So this is the example of this is the branch right here that is always being pushed into master. So you could use a tagging strategy, but this one is actually using a branching strategy for um, being able to identify what's in an environment. So they create a branch called stable. Now they need to move up here to main. So what do they do? They need to do a merging straight into stable from, uh, from main. Now this one's interesting because this kind of uh, contradicts what I was saying earlier where it should create that new commit. Uh, but there, there is another one that we're going to see here in just a moment where it's a branch and you need to move everything in and there are changes. And so you get that new commit uh, that needs to be put in. So ED489, I'd love to see what was, inside of, what was inside of that. And at this point, it looks like main was already up there. So everything from main got moved into stable and we didn't actually have to create that new commit. So again, this is a little contradicting from what I was saying earlier. So we'll check it out in just a moment. So here's where it gets to be a little more uh, a little more complex. And this one is where we're talking about a, a three-way merge. So uh, the idea behind this, it, the, it attempts a recursive merge. So whenever you do a, a get merge, the default is recursive. Well, the other ones are, I apologize, I, I, I did not look into those. But what we're doing on this one is we've, are, we've diverged, we have uh, where are we at? We have other that needs to be merged in. So this other branch needs to be merged into main. So the reason why the last branch did not actually have to get that new commit into main was because main was not receiving any changes. That's what it is. So new commits were able to be identified and put into stable without new commits because if stable was going into main, that would be a little different. I believe. We'll figure that out. Cool. So for this one, we've already diverged twice with other. We have two commits that we need to put in. So how do we do this? One, we find the most common uh, commit that we have. So that's our first one. Second one is what is the head of the branch of the source branch? So the source branch is going to be the branch that we want to merge into a target, which is main. So we have the, uh, the common the common commit, which is B325C. We have the head of the source and we have the head of the target. Head of the target is right here, ED489. We're gonna merge all those three together. We're gonna find any differences that they have. If there are differences, we get into an idea, we get into a, a merge conflict. And I do have an example for sure of that later. Yeah, I got it going. Uh, so, but if everything is smooth, so let's say, uh, in master, we change the title, but in uh, in other, we just change the description. There is no conflicting change. There are no conflicting changes there. Uh, Git is very smart when it comes to being able to identify anything that's conflicting. So if it's on different if if it's on different lines, uh, typically Git can just resolve those, bring them together, bada bing, bada boom, done. So for this example, let's move straight over, and we have F8BC5. F8BC5 is an explanation of all the merge changes. And I, as part of the merging uh, later, you're gonna see this example. So it has a description typically saying, this is what was merged into this and uh, any other description that you wanna put in or the description of a pull request, which we'll talk about that later. Typically when you're merging uh, into master or main, you wanna create a pull request, which is just, uh, Ask, uh, more or less permission to merge code into master and main. It's one, it, it's a nice little gate that that's uh, that's put into play. So, and then in the end of the day, we still do have this old branch. So other is still on the same head, and then we have main, which now has a new head. It has a new latest commit, which is going to be that merge message, which includes all of the history of other. So, cool. Next thing we have is actually talking about a commit. So it's the idea of being able to uh, stage a file, 
So that's adding a file into uh, a, a waiting area, uh, adding it to a stage. And then it's the idea of actually committing it. So creating that snapshot. So as you're working on code, Git can identify anything that has changed. So is it going to be a new file, a renamed file, a deleted file, or a changed file? Uh, Git can identify that stuff pretty easily in a directory uh, based on the previous snapshots. So as you're creating, as you're making changes to files, Git will, uh, you're going to do a Git add. And on this example, I put the actual file name. Oh, I think my headset died. Can you still hear me there? I hear you, Brian. Perfect, thank you. I'm back. All right, cool. So on this one, as we're adding files into the staging area, so we have two options. We could do the git add, or there's also a, uh, a an idea that we can actually look at each individual change and add them. And I'm going to show you those couple different examples. I have one example on here, which is git add. So the idea of being able to add an individual file or add multiple files and then actually do the commit. So create that snapshot. So the example here is we have all of our previous commits and let's just say file one.txt changed. Uh, if you check the status of Git, it's gonna yell at you and it's gonna, it's not gonna yell at you, it's pretty nice. Git's, Git's nice, but it's gonna put a red message on there saying that this file has changed. And when you do a git add similar to this, it'll give you a green a green message that'll say that it's it's been committed, it's been staged. Uh, and your colors may differ from mine. So we'll uh, we'll play around, around with that. Uh, I believe actually mine on this computer are all white. We'll find out. But when you create that commit, it's going to change your history. It's going to push it up. Now, one thing about this, when you create a commit locally, if you, excuse me, if you stop it, git commit, it's just going to commit locally. Remember that nothing actually gets out to the remote repository and, until you tell it to. So let's go one, one step further. <clears throat> All right, cool. I don't have anything for actually pushing and pulling on here, uh, but we're going to get into that here very soon. But the idea of pushing and pulling is taking these commits and making the repository uh, out in uh, GitHub or out on GitLab or Azure DevOps and making their history match yours, making your snapshots actually get reflected up there. And then if somebody else wants to pull the code, if you've pushed up your commit history, if you push up your commits, uh, when they do a pull, they'll pull them down immediately. So they'll be able to get your latest files. They'll be able to get your latest uh, media. They'll be able to get whatever you just pushed up as soon as you get that in. So are there any questions up to now? Yeah, I have one, Brent. Yeah. Um, I think it's yeah your last slide yeah. where you where you did your three way merger. Yep. Is that scenario creating for for other? Is that scenario creating kind of like a, a stagnant branch that you were kind of talking about? Does other become become that stagnant branch or or how how is that working for for other? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Actually, over time, if you leave it stay, it absolutely will. So. There's a there's a uh, a bad practice when um, when you when you merge stuff in when you merge branches. Uh, in my opinion, if you're done with the branch, you delete the branch. So that that doesn't always mean. Uh, excuse me. It means make sure you delete it on the repository on GitHub or GitLab or anywhere else, and get rid of it locally too. Um, if you're only changing the title once, uh, or if you're changing it very consistently, keep it up to date with main. So at this point, you can now merge main back into other, and you'll have everything that main has in other. Uh, or if you want to, you can just delete that other branch and recreate it. So when you delete a branch on the repository, you can also delete it locally. You can create the new branch, and there will be no conflicts. And so you'll be able to just have both branches, not a problem, uh, living in the history. So as for stagnant, it definitely will become just depending on how you use it. If you're using something like stable, 
uh, whereas you saw was just, uh, they just create the branch and they just continuously keep it up to date. Uh, if you don't keep it up to date, it'll become stagnant very fast, very fast. So um, there are some, uh, some companies that are you know, creating, you know, hundreds of commits a day, just depending on how many devs there are. Uh, TDD practice that I've seen at a previous shop was make sure that you push a commit with every single uh, green refactoring. Uh, now, so a lot of those also do squash, which is the, uh, the practice of taking your, um, excuse me, uh, squashing or rebasing, which is the idea of taking the commits and making them smaller. So making them into less commits to push into main or master. Uh, but there are a lot of them that will, or yeah, there are a lot, a lot of individuals that'll still push all those commits up there. I like the history. I think it's nice to have the noise, <laughs> but yes, it does create a lot of commits that can, uh, make those branches, uh, stale very fast. Awesome. So what I'm going to show now real quick is just, uh, so the different version control systems that we, that we have. So I showed GitHub just a little bit. Uh, GitHub has a lot of stuff in it. This is actually my favorite one because it has dark mode. It, dark mode definitely gives it like a plus 10 on a, you know, on, on anything. Uh, GitLab does not, I'm very sad. I did see that they have an issue out uh, from about a year ago where they were planning on doing dark mode, but they're still working on it. So they'll get it one of these days, right? Uh, GitHub also, it not only shows you all the files that are in there uh, on your repositories, but you can also get into other repositories if you want to. So just kind of looking in here, uh, let's go in here and let's take a look at uh, Angular. So I'm an Angular fan. Uh, Angular is an open source uh, framework for uh, JavaScript. If you haven't used it before, it's a fun one to take a look at. Um, but Angular is completely open source. You can hop in here. You can make all your changes. Uh, what else do we have? Um, I don't believe Unity is one. That's OK. We'll go ahead. And so if you have any questions about any, or if you see any packages that you can download within NPM, typically they're available up on uh, GitHub. Uh, the, and if they're open source, you know, put in your pull request, put in any changes. Uh, yeah. So. Um, let's move on to the next one, which is GitLab. So I really haven't used GitLab a whole lot. Uh, GitLab is, uh, was, was really nice at the beginning when I first started using it because it had uh, CICD built in. So that's continuous integration, continuous delivery, continuous deployment, or continuous deployment, continuous delivery. So, uh, but it also does provide you with a way of taking a look at all your files, uh, similar to what we had on the last one. Uh, oh, this is old code. Cool. Um, and the last one is Azure DevOps. So it is, it's pretty much the same thing. So you can see all of your, you can see repositories that are in here. You can see all your code that's in here. Uh, here's an example of a pipeline that runs through Azure DevOps. Uh, cool. So uh, those are just a few examples of version control systems that use Git. So now what are we going to do? We're going to create a repository. We're going to add some files. We're going to modify the files. We're going to create branches. We're going to create pull requests. And I'm going to show you what a merge conflict looks like. So I hope you're ready for this one. This is fun. So on GitHub, if you want to create a new repository on your main page, GitHub has changed quite a bit in the past few years since it was acquired by Microsoft. But in my opinion, they made things a little easier to see. And of course, they added dark mode again. I love it. So if you click here on new, you can create a new repository. All your repositories are put under you or put under any of the organizations that you're part of. If you're looking to do something that's kind of a proof of concept, if you're doing it for a client, I would check to see if they have a GitHub. Uh, maybe see if you can, or sorry, a GitHub organization that you could hook up to so you could put the proof of concept in there. Or if it's something that you're wanting to keep pretty close to you, you can actually do it in here as well. GitHub does provide, I believe, unlimited private repositories now, which is something that also has changed over time. And it's been, it's been pretty nice. For this one, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new uh, IGDA demo repository. So that's, that's a fun little name that we're just going to give it. 
Uh, I've created it like four times today, just playing around with this. Uh, and we're going to create this one as a public. So if anybody's interested in seeing this as we progress through in your browser, if you go to github.com slash bgerhards slash IGDA demo, you can see things as they happen. So cool. Uh, along with being able to create it as public, uh, adding a description, you can also initialize specific files uh, to add into your repository just to give it a little extra something at the beginning, something that, that you don't have to generate yourself. So there's the idea of a readme. So if you've been inside of a GitHub repo, on the very first page at the root, you see that there's usually a description of what you're looking at. That is actually a readme file. So if you put a readme.md at the root of your of your repository, then it will show uh, it will show everything there. There's a specific um, uh, language uh, markdown. If it uses markdown language inside of there, that's uh, it's super easy to do. Super nice. Uh, you could also do a git ignore, which is um, pretty much exactly as it sounds. So you can ignore specific files, you can ignore directories, or you can ignore things based on specific patterns. So if you want to ignore everything that ends in JS, I believe you can do asterisk asterisk dot JS. I don't know why you would do that, but you can. Uh, but if you want to ignore uh, anything really, again, you add a git ignore and it's just a, it's just a file. File is literally called dot git ignore. Um, now it does provide you with templates and that's what's really nice for here. So you have different templates that you could use uh, for the gamers. I don't believe there's a Unity one. There's an, oh, hey, look, there is, sweet. <coughs> Excuse me. So we're gonna go ahead and ignore this for right now. And there's also a license you can get. So they do have different license that you can throw on here. Some of them that make it so that uh, well, I'm not going to pretend like I understand what all the license mean, but they do give little breakdowns if you do a quick search on the internet in case you're looking for something specific. So feel free and browse through there. If anyone's very knowledgeable on what these uh, licenses are or have any resources that point out to that, feel free and share it. Uh, I'm sure the Learn More has a little bit more on there. So we're going to go ahead and create this. <clears throat> cool. We have a repo. So the repository, if you haven't done this before, uh, has a few different options. If you have the GitHub desktop uh, application up and running, uh, if you're interested, so you can actually click the setup and desktop. And what it'll do is it'll pull down uh, the URL, put in a GitHub, and you can do the download that way. Or you can follow the, dire the directions that are on here. So we're going to do something that's very similar to this. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that real quick. So let's hop into the terminal. So as I told you, I like to do things in the terminal. And if you have any questions about some of the things that I do, please let me know. If I go a little fast, also please let me know. So IGDA demo is a directory that we're going to be working out of. Uh, the first thing that you want to do is you actually want to initialize your directory, uh, your Git. So IGDA demo, this is where all of my code is going to live. This is going to be the root. So I want to do a git init. And this is just going to initialize a dot git folder inside of my directory. And just to show you a little bit, let's go ahead and hop over there. So if I go to IGDA demo, you're going to see that a git uh, directory has actually been created. I'm going to move this over here so we can take a look together as the, as the changes happen. Uh, inside of here, we do have a, a branches folder. Uh, we have some configuration that's very specific to this one, information about what the head is, uh, some hooks in case you want to do some specific things when you do a push or a pull. We're not going to get into that in this session. Uh, anything else that really re refers or anything specific to this branch? Let's go back. So now that we have our Git repository uh, set up, uh, the first thing that I want to do is um, I want to see if I have a remote setup. And by default, it does not create a remote. So what I mean by remote is a remote repository. So a remote re repository is going to be this right here. So luckily, GitHub provides me with this little instruction right here that I can just copy and paste. Uh, but for anybody who this is your first time doing it, you can either do it as HTTPS or SSH. Depending on which one you choose, it's going to change a little bit down here but you're gonna do a get remote add. And what this does is it creates, it creates an alias of, oh, come on. Maybe I didn't copy it. That's cool. Get remote add, creates a, 
a an alias of origin. So whenever you refer to origin, you're going to be referring to this repository right here. All right, let's go ahead and add that. Now, if I do a git remote, you're going to see that we do have our, our origin repository. So we have origin set up. And now we're ready to actually push and pull. I mean, it's that easy, right? So the first thing that we want to do is I actually want to throw some HTML files in here just to have something, just to have something to put in there. So bear with me just one moment. I have the files right here. All right. Now, just to show you what I put in here, this is just a template that I found online. You're going to find that I am terrible at styling. And so one of the, my favorite things to do is to go find free templates and beat those up because it gets me knowledgeable a little more on kind of how they do the styling that they're doing in these nice templates, um, but also gives me a chance to not have to worry about this stuff if I'm just putting together like a little sample like we're doing today. And so this one has a nice little JavaScript. It has, you know, a form on there. I don't care about that stuff right now. What I care about is showing files changing, right? So... <clears throat> First thing we could do is we could actually take a look at the status. So get status is going to tell you first off what branch you're on. Where are you working out of? Uh, second thing is, are there any commits? And if you do a git fetch, it'll pull down the knowledge that there are commits out there, but it's not actually gonna pull down the commits. And then it'll say that there are commits available. So it's gonna say you're a few commits behind, you're a few commits ahead. So just try and trying to get you caught up, right? And the other thing is it's going to have untracked files as well as tracked files. So we don't have any tracked files. Tracked files are, tra are files, excuse me, that have already been pushed up into the repository and there's a snapshot of their current state. Uh, and as you make changes to those, it's tracking the state. You're able to see all the revisions that are on there. So what are we going to do? We need to add these files. So we have a couple ways of doing them that. So you can add the directory, which is going to be like assets. And one thing that Git does as part of your install, and I apologize, I skipped all that stuff because it installing is pretty tedious, uh, but it's nice to see all the different options. And if anyone's interested in having a conversation about options, if things get really crazy, I just choose defaults. I just hit next. But what it's gonna do, is it's actually gonna change it, uh, your, uh, what is it called, the line feed? Uh, so the very last character on there to something that's uh, not Windows specific. So it's going to change it to thing to something that's more universal. So that's what it just did. It would be replaced by CRLF. Uh, so if I do a get status now, you're going to see that there have been a lot of files that have been committed. And that's because I said, grab everything that's in that assets file, that assets folder, excuse me. That's all you got to do. I say that, well, that's all you gotta do. So the next thing that I wanna do is I actually wanna go take a look at uh, say components.html. Let's go ahead and commit that one. So stage, excuse me, I shouldn't say commit. We're gonna go ahead and add components.html. So we're gonna go ahead and add this into staging. Cool. Awesome, well look, we have components now. But at this point, this is our first commit. We have everything up there. You could put a dot similar to what you can do in other command line. If you're familiar with command line at all, uh, dot just says everything that's in this directory forward. So it's going to get everything from here on. So if I hit enter, you're going to see everything was added. So now everything is ready to be uh, ready to be committed, right? So what do we do? So now we need to commit. So I'm going to run this nice little command. Just It's just git commit. If I hit enter, what it's going to do is it's, uh, my, by default, I set it up to use Vim. Uh, Vim is just a terminal. Uh, it's usually it typically used in bash. I don't know how it's showing up in here, but I'm okay with it. I don't care. Uh, but it's, a, it's a, a way for us to manage files, update files, change files. I'm not versed on that. But anyways, <clears throat> Once you get into here, you're going to see a few things on here. So it wants you to enter a commit message for the changes. So all the lines starting with the uh, 
uh, the pound symbol will be ignored and the empty mess and an empty message aborts the commit. So what it's saying is this is just a message for you to see right now. When you add a commit, you need to actually write your stuff up here on this top line. But the good thing about this, it, this is the initial commit. And I, I was kind of thrown off when I saw this. It's been a while since I've really seen an initial commit. But it's showing all the files that need to be committed. So here's a list of everything. If there are changes, if there are deletions or anything, it's going to show up here. We'll be able to see examples of that here uh, shortly as well. Uh, so if you're not familiar with Vim, first thing you need to do is hit A. A is going to insert. So if you see down here at the bottom of the terminal, it turned on insert for us. So now we can just type in uh, initial commit. That's all I want to do. Now in Vim also, if you hit enter, it's going to go down a line. So how do we get out of this? Hit escape once. Now we need to save it, right? We need to save and we need to get out of Vim. So while this is a get lesson, we also need to know how to get out of this because if you get stuck in here, you're going to have a, you're going to have a fun time. So if you hit colon, it brings you down here to put some commands in. So you hit W to write. So you want to write this initial commit message to this commit file. And then you want to do a Q to close out of uh, here. Now, if you, if you really don't want to commit, you can do a Q and you can do an exclamation point. This will force it to quit without saving. So let's go ahead and write and quit. Hit enter. And what happened? It says that it did the initial commit. It went in create mode and it set all those in there. So if we do a log, so if you type git log, it shows a history. We now have an initial commit. Now, remember something. This is all locally at this point. I could have turned on airplane mode. You couldn't have heard me hear me talk. That's why I didn't do it, right? That's all. But this is now all locally. This has not been pushed up to the repository. And let me show you that real quick. Again, this is this is all about learning. So IGDA demo doesn't have anything yet. So how do we get it up there, Brian? When we do a get status, it says nothing to commit, working tree clean. When we do a get log, it shows that my head for master is right here, but we know it's not on the remote repository. We need to do a get push. Uh, but that's not enough. We haven't set up what's called the upstream at this point. I know that I'm, I'm probably getting really annoying at this point. But so upstream is telling us something interesting, okay? <clears throat> Our local repository has a branch called master. Our remote repository does not have a branch called master. In fact, our remote re repository has nothing. This is literally an empty repository with zero branches. What we need to do is we need to tell it what branch that we need to push out to. And being the good get that it is, it will create the branch for us. And on top of that, it will, it will set that upstream automatically so that we don't have to worry about typing this in each time. That's what this set upstream is. So let's go ahead and do that. So what I love doing in this case, right, is a good old copy paste. Get push set upstream origin master. What that's saying, and remember origin is our remote repository. We set that alias up a little bit ago. So what just happened? We got code, isn't that pretty cool? All right, so let's look over this just a little bit to see what actually happened. So first off, it went through and it counted it. Uh, it, it recursively got all the objects, counted up the objects. That's okay, fine. Uh, delta compression, you up to 16 threads. It did the compression. It wrote the objects out, so sent them upstream. Uh, it made sure that everything was fine. Uh, created a new branch on the remote repository, and uh, it set up our local master to uh, to track the remote master and origin. So that's magic, right? So our local repository is now officially connected and synced up to master on here. So now if we do a get log, we have two things. We have head of master, and we have origin master. 
So this doesn't show, this doesn't always, this shows our, our local repositories and it shows our upstream repositories. Pretty cool, right? All right, let's do some fun stuff. So, all right, now we talked about branches a little bit. So right now we have one branch, it's called master. So I talked a little bit also earlier about changing a title. Uh, let's pull this up right here. I don't know why that unpinned. Why both origin and master? Thank you. So earlier on, we had to set up a, a connection to the remote. So if we do a get remote, uh, get URL origin. So when we talk about origin, it is actually an SSH. The, the get URL behind the scenes is an SSH connection up to the GitHub repository. So when we look at this uh, and we do our, our push on, or excuse me, when we do our push, we need to tell Git what upstream branch that it needs to be connected to. So the branch may exist already. So if we pulled from a specific branch, uh, it will pull down and create a local branch. But then when we push back up, we need to tell it that there needs to be a connection between those two. I believe I can still have a master locally and I could push out to a branch called main, or I can push out to a branch called dev, whatever we want to set up as that initial branch. They don't have to be one-to-one. -one. It's good practice to have them as one-to-one -one, though. Good question. So next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create a new branch. And the branch is actually going to be called, uh, uh, we're just going to do set title. So let's do uh, get checkout. So when we do get checkout, what checkout does is it, uh, let me let me go here. Don't you love this? Get checkout, active switching between different versions of a target entity. Yeah, I love it. All right. I know it in practice. I don't know it in definition. All right. So get checkout. <clears throat> You're going to be using this to switch between your branches. You're also going to be using this to pull down versions of files. So if a specific file is uh, you've updated a file and you need to just get the latest from head, you can do get checkout the specific file name. We're not going to worry about that today. What we're going to worry about is switching between branches because remember we need to mess up our history so we can have a merge conflict, right? So I'm going to so get checkout allows us to create a new branch as well. Now I believe there's a way just you can use the get branch, uh, get branch new or get branch. Eh, anyways, but if you use get get branch get checkout hyphen b and then a branch name. Uh, it'll create a new branch called whatever you want it to be. Now, if you want to see what branch you're on, get status, we're now on the branch update title. Now this one is local as well. This has not been set up in the repository yet, or excuse me, yes, the remote repository yet because we haven't pushed anything up. So let's go ahead and make some changes, right? Uh, let's go ahead and go into Visual Studio Code. <clears throat> and looks like I already have this repository up. And I'm gonna go here into uh, index. And let's go up to the title, that that title that's up top. Um, I don't really like that. See, it just says title page. It's just not fun, right? Let's go ahead and change it to uh, that place because we're just playing, right? So title page, I do a refresh. This is HTML. We're just changing a file. Now, Well, look at that. We have changes not staged for commit. So what we want to do is we want to actually get this up. We need to get this up. We need to get it staged. We need to get it committed. We need to get this pushed into GitHub. How are we going to do that? Get add. Remember that? But I'm going to do something a little different where we can actually look at the individual piece. Uh, the I apologize. We're going to chunk this out. So we're going to actually see the changes that were made on the individual pieces. So what I did was I did git add hyphen p. Now, to, sh to if you have any questions about anything that I'm doing, I apologize, I should have shown this. You can do git add and you can type help. And it will show you exactly what, uh, what I'm getting us into. And 
I said chunking and it actually looks like we're patching. What it allows us to do is you have an entire file of changes. It allows us to take the individual pieces and take a look at those instead of the entire file at once. It's a lot easier just to patch changes out, especially if you just have little changes here and there. So you can accept or deny different changes based on the file itself. Uh, this is a good way if you're working with something localhost and you just have a small change, uh, change a URL from something to a localhost uh, instance, you can just ignore the change of URL and just leave it as it is. So you don't actually push that up. Uh, if you have, uh, for some reason, a key that you don't want to expose, uh, I highly recommend not exposing any of them in GitHub. Uh, but if you do the patching, you can make sure that you don't push that up on accident. Now you could always do a git diff as well. So you could do a git diff and it will show you all your changes as well. So from here down, we have the changes that we've actually made. So uh, removed a line, added a line. So made a change to the line. So let's go ahead and git add p. Uh, this change here, I do want to keep. So title page change to that place, cool. And now we have changes to be committed. So let's go ahead and get that pushed up. Uh, remember, we do have to do the uh, that set upstream. You could do a hyphen U as well. You could do a hyphen U. Now, this is I'm doing something a little different as well. Uh, origin. So hyphen U origin. So remember, origin points to the remote. And now I have head in here. Head doesn't exactly match the branch, but when you type head. Uh, get it, get understands that when you type in head, it actually means the branch that you're in. So if you do git push hyphen u, so set upstream origin head, it will push into a branch called update title. And I'll show you that in just a second. Yeah, take a look at that branch update title set to track remote branch update title from origin. So I'm showing a couple shortcuts, which are nice to haves. Uh, if you don't want to do that stuff, don't feel pressured. I would just do the hyphen hyphen set hyphen upstream origin uh, branch names, update title. Keep it simple and right now, right? <clears throat> cool. So now we have a branch out there. Uh, you know what? I messed up because I never committed. So we pushed up the branch. The branch exists up there, but there's no changes. What am I doing? All right. So let's do a get commit. Uh, and let's do uh, updated title. Cool. And well, we already set upstream, remember? So now we can just do git push. Cool. All right. Let's go back to GitHub real quick. And we're right there. All right. So we now have multiple branches. So if you click on, let me go back there just for a second. I went a little too fast. If you take a look at master here, you click on this, you can go to, you can see a quick snapshot of all the branches that are there. You could also search for them, or you can go to view all branches, which actually gives you an ability to manage the branches or do whatever you want with them. Uh, this is a nice view when you have a lot, so you can uh, you know, find that trash can and delete a bunch of them. So as you see right now, we have default branch, which is master. We have branches that I've created. So I'm the originator of, update title, as well as active branches, update title. And it says that they've been updated. Uh, one thing you could do from here is you can create a pull request. And we're going to do that in just a second. Uh, we can also do some edits, which it oh, you could rename. Awesome. I've never done this before. It's pretty cool. Uh, when you do that, make sure that you update your local as well. Easiest way to do that is to delete the branch, do a git fetch, which pulls down all the commits that have happened. And it will pull down that branch and then do a and then you do a git commit to pull it down. So pretty easy. Cool. All right, let's go back to code real quick. So when we go into this code, you can see that the first thing that we have is uh, compare and pull request. What does that mean? So that update title is something that I've changed. And now I probably want to put it into master. Now that's not always the case. There might be cases where I want to work on something over multiple days. So I'm going to put multiple changes into it. So I don't want to do a pull request right away, but GitHub knows I've, I'm up to something. And so they put this little button here. So let's go ahead and let's just 
let's compare and pull request real quick and let's create a pull request. So a pull request is a way to kind of get acceptance from your peers, get acceptance maybe from yourself. So you could see all the changes on a web page before putting them into master or main. So in our case, we're going to be uh, we're going to go from the source of update title to the uh, target of master. So we're going to be pushing out. So a couple things that it looks for. It looks for a title and then it looks for a description of what happened. So updated title from the default text to a new uh, improved title. That's all I'm going to put right now. <clears throat> If people wanted to see what happened, you could scroll down just a little bit and it also shows all your changes. So it's pretty pretty cool. So from here, you could also see the number of lines that have changed. You can see uh, number of lines that have changed, I believe once you put, once you, okay. So you create a pull request, let's go ahead and do that. So now make sure I'm not gonna eat my words. Files changed. Uh, all right, I thought that it had a uh, number of lines changed, but that's cool. We'll figure that out later. Uh, you can go to commits to actually see the number of commits that have happened. And at each commit, remember each snapshot, it shows you what those changes were. So if I go into update title <clears throat> in here, I changed index HTML. That's the only file that I changed. And what happened? Well, it shows you right here. So let's go ahead and go back to the conversation. So as part of a pull request, there are a few things to look at. Uh, by default, it just tells you if it can be if it can be merged with the uh, uh, with the base, which this is just a, a quick a quick check to say, hey, are there any conflicts that you would have to resolve, such as if we change title and title, and we'll do that in just a little bit. Um, it also gives you an opportunity to put a uh, a comment. And we'll go ahead and commit. <clears throat> and it, it keeps a nice little running conversation going. And if you wanted to within the commit itself, if I go into the files changed, you can actually put comments, uh, comments on the lines themselves. So again, it's a running conversation to go ahead and wow, lots of pop ups. Um, a running conversation to say, hey, you know, this doesn't look right, or have you considered this, or have you considered that? Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and resolve this. And then what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to merge this. Let's just go ahead and get that done. Let's rip this band aid off. This title needs to change. All right. Let's go ahead and confirm the merge. All right. Now it's merged. The code's there. Uh, remember when I say that uh, you should probably delete your branches with each one? That's where it is. So delete branch, if we go back to code, master, now it's gone. Cool. Uh, I have two more examples for you. And I know I'm running kind of long today. I've, I think I'm just getting really excited. It's good stuff, right? So what we're going to do first, it shows that we're still on the branch update title. And if I go over to master and I do a pull, so what I did is I did a git checkout and I typed in the branch that I wanted to move to and the branch that I want to move to is master. And I do a git pull. What it's going to do is it's going to, all right, there we go. It's going to pull in the latest. Uh, it's going to pull in the latest commit history. So if we do a git log, what it's going to show us is two things. One, where I'm at right now, which is master, the head is all the way up here at a commit that we did at 719, okay? The head and master and origin and master are at the same place. So they are caught up, They're officially caught up. Also, if you see something interesting, this commit, it's a merge pull request number one from Brian Ger from B. Gerhardt's update title, updated title. So what happened is when I hit merge, there was also a chance to put another title and a commit message in there. I decided not to do it. I just went ahead and kept the default and this is what it is. So this is what your merge request is going to look like. Uh, remember we talked about that that three-way merge, the the common commit, the source commit, the source head and the target head all come together. This is that coming together, this merge pull request number one. 
And if we take a look here, merge pull request number one, if we look at, da, 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 I believe, here we go, commits. We could take a look at this one. And it's showing us all of the changes. So this is the snapshot at the commit. This, this is all the changes that we had. Cool. All right. So what we're going to do now is we're going to create two branches off a single commit. We're going to change the same line. And then we're going to push both of them up and do pull requests and see what happens. All right. If you have any questions, please let me know. So I'm creating one branch called update to Bob's Burgers. Um, I'm just going to say headline. I use title. That's the title. I uh, There's another title in below. Uh, I'll just keep it a headline. Why not? So we're going to update it to Bob's Burgers. Uh, a couple things I want to show here. One, let's go ahead and update it to Bob's Burgers. Um, I'm going to update this here to Bob's Burgers. So that place, Mountain, is now Bob's Burgers. So first thing to talk about real quick uh, is when we are making changes in a specific branch, remember that the changes are part of that branch. So if I do a get status, and remember, I'm going to add, I'm going to go ahead and, and stage what we just did. So I want to change it to Bob's Burgers. I'm happy with that. I'm going to go ahead and keep that. So I'm going to commit it. And here's a new little shortcut. If you don't want to see all of your changes that were made, you can go ahead and just type in git commit hyphen M, and then you do parentheses or on non-Windows machines, <laughs> you can do a uh, quotation, a uh, single quote, not parentheses, excuse me, with use double quote on Windows, uh, up, updated to Bob's Burgers, updated headline. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and push this uh, and I'm gonna use origin head because I don't wanna type in the name of this branch. All right, the branch is up there. So this is interesting too, take a look at this. <clears throat> so I didn't see this before because we used the, uh, the git commit with um, actually typing the name in there. So along with the push, it also has this message right here, which it says remote uh, create pull request. So if I was to copy this and put it in here, it lets me create a pull request right away. How cool. All right, let's get back to this. Uh, so what we have right now is Bob's Burgers. We are still on update branch or update headline to Bob's Burgers. Um, but I don't wanna commit that yet. I don't wanna commit to that yet. So I'm gonna go back to master. Remember, master has different code, right? So watch this. Bob's Burgers is gone, it's back to mountain. Uh, also, if you wanna go back to the last repository you're at or branch, you do a hyphen. Uh, now we're back to update headline with Bob's Burgers. Ah, right? Cool. So now let's go back to master because of our master plan of actually updating this headline with different things. So. Hey, let's do this. Uh, let's go ahead and do a git checkout, create a new branch called update headline to burgers with Bob. Sounds like a cheap uh, rip off of Bob's burgers, right? Probably not gonna be getting burger of the day with this one. But what we're gonna do real quick is hop into Visual Studio Code. We have mountain burgers with Bob. I don't know what the correct way of doing it, if you need to have a capital W or not, that's not important right now. But we're gonna do a status and you see that we have a modified index. I'm moving a little fast right now, so please slow me down. I'm gonna go ahead and do a git add and we're gonna, uh, we're gonna patch. So I see that mountain has changed to burgers with Bob. We're gonna go ahead and keep that. And we're going to go ahead and create a commit message of updated title to burgers with Bob. And actually it's headline. Cool. And get push. 
changing my upstream to origin head. All right, let's go to GitHub and find out what we just did. Holy crap. All right, so now we have two branches up there that effectively are doing the same exact thing, right? So how are we gonna do this? So first off, I like the Bob's Burgers. I wanna keep that one. So I'm gonna go ahead and do compare and pull request. Uh, updated headline to amaz uh, the new amazing text, Bob's Burgers. All right, now let's go ahead and create the pull request. We've already seen this uh, and change from Mountain to Bob's Burgers. We'll go ahead and create pull request. And so my team has looked at this. Everything looks good. The branch, is, the branch has no conflicts. We're just going to go ahead and merge this. And this is what I skipped last time. You could put that header on there, and you could put a little detail inside, something that'll show up inside your Git log. We'll go ahead and confirm the merge. And uh, I hate keeping branches around. Let's go ahead and delete that. <clears throat> let's go back to code. Well, I still have this other title that we can merge in. Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Well, what is this? So we've gotten a little red. So let's go ahead and uh, updates title to uh, headline. To not so awesome. Uh, burgers with Bob. Now you would not typically do this. I probably should have done it in the opposite direction where this one got merged and then we decided to change it to the other one. But this is all for fun, right? So create pull request. Now I've got this thing where it's saying the branch has conflicts that need to be resolved. So conflicting files are index.html. You have two options. You can edit it within the web editor or I can do it in command line. I'm gonna do the web editor just because we can. And it's super easy to be, still be able to see what we need to do. So if you take a look at this, uh, let me zoom in there a little bit. So it gives you a nice little indicator of where you actually have issues to resolve. Now, this is a very simple one. I could see it's one line here and one line here. You can get some that are like entire files and it's just gross as all can be. So the top one is going to be the branch. So from the source branch, and this is from the target branch. So, uh, target, excuse me, target branch, source branch. So what you wanna do is you need to get rid of one or you need to merge them together. But in the end, this line, this line and this line cannot, you don't want them there. They will ruin your code. So I like Bob's Burgers. That's why I said this was not really a good example because I want to keep Bob's Burgers. Typically, you just would not merge something like this. You wouldn't create that pull request. You just delete it. Somebody would say, ah, I don't like that title. Just get rid of this pull request, delete the branch, done. Uh, but you know, for science, I really like this one, but I, we're not going to keep it. We'll go with Burgers with Bob. So we're going to delete all these lines. We're going to delete this line here, and we're done. So with GitHub, now if we scroll back to the top, we have marked as resolved. So you have to resolve all conflicts. You can leave conflicts in line, I believe, but eh, don't. I'd re I would recommend not doing it. So mark is resolved, and commit merge. So what it's doing now is, whoops. Come on. All right. What it did now is it actually created a new uh, commit. So because you had to merge everything, you had to pull what was in master into this branch. So you had to merge branch master into update headline 13 seconds ago. That's what we did. So it grabbed what was in master. It put it into this branch. Now we need to put this branch back into master. Isn't that great? So let's go back to conversation. And everything looks good. Team said it's great. Going to leave it like this. Confirm merge. And delete branch. Because that's that's what we good humans do. Uh, so get status shows that we're on update headline. We're going to get checkout master. And we're going to pull. All right. And what it did is it saw that index had two changes. It had an addition and a subtraction or an insertion and a deletion. So now we're going to go check out the log. Okay. So remember we had to merge master into that branch. Yeah. It kind of floods the history with that kind of stuff, but there's really not a whole lot you do about that outside of squashing. Uh, 
And then we have merge pull request number three from Burgers with Bob to uh, Master. And so we're there. So we, we not only saw putting the initial commit in there and making additional changes to the commit through branches uh, using pull requests, but we were able to resolve uh, merge conflicts. Um, so let's take a look at this. Uh, last thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to take a look at this through visualization. Uh, I'm trying to remember if it's through here. I might have to pull up source tree real quick. So you could use GitHub Desktop. GitHub Desktop is nice because it is a GitHub product. It, it works okay. Uh, there's also this thing, which I wish they had dark mode on because now my eyes are just burning. But the cool thing is this actually shows, um, it, it shows all your changes and it, it shows this nice little graph. I love graphs. So I, it might be a little hard to see, might be a little squinting, but here's the initial commit down at the bottom where we have one branch. And then what we did is we created a new branch and we updated the title and then we merged it back in. So that yellow branch disappears because we deleted it. Uh, next thing we did is we created two branches. One of them we made a change to, then we made a change to the other one. Then we merged this, the second one in. And then the first one we had to bring master back into it. And then we were able to merge that in. So our entire story can be seen in this little tiny graph. And I absolutely love this. There is one more way that you can get to this that I just learned today. If you do git k, G-I-T-K, it will show you this little tool here. Again, this is brand new to me as of this evening. I'm not gonna, I'll bring it back to the middle. But you can see here, it shows that same story. You have that commit right here, which is update title, updated title, and then you merged. And then we created a branch, uh, we created a branch, made a commit to that branch, created another one, made a commit, merged, merged, master into it. And so we have the entire story here in a graph. This one's not as pretty as that source tree. I really like that one. But it tells the same story. So it's pretty cool. So what, have, what did we talk about today? We talked about Git. We talked about uh, version control in general. We talked about uh, using GitHub as a version control tool. We showed examples of connecting to it through a uh, through our command line. So we were able to create a small project. We pushed a bunch of code up to it. We changed the code, deleted stuff. I actually have uh, notes on here to show deletions, but that's okay. I think you get the gist. Um, <clears throat> so that is the end of the presentation. Um, I didn't really leave any time for questions, but I definitely can uh, stick around and answer any if you guys have any. So, but that's it. You're still recording. That's okay. I can stop recording if you'd like. Um, I'm wondering, is there a, a single command that will um, stage commit and push all in one command. I don't know about push, but you can do, you can do git commit hyphen a M and then you could, so uh, let me, sh you can do, yes, git commit hyphen a for add M for message. And then in quotations, type in your message and what it'll do. You could do a capital a, I believe to add everything. I have to remember that one, but Essentially, what that'll do is it'll add everything, it'll stage everything, and then it will commit everything. Now, pushing out to um, pushing out to the repository, I don't have an answer for that, but you can create uh, a Git alias that can just do all the commands one at a time, so it can take care of all that for you. Awesome. I'll go ahead and stop recording, but thanks everybody for watching.